for today. What are you depending on him for today? Glory to God. He's able to do it. He's able to do it seemingly.
Jesus, all of it. Greet everybody online. Amen. Greet everybody in the house. Amen. Those near and far, international visitors, international family members. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Yes, he has. It's a pleasure to be back in the house of the Lord. It's a privilege. Amen. Amen. Some places are trying to shut the doors of the church down. Amen. But to God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. We are excited about the times we're living in. Amen. If you have Jesus, you should be excited. Hallelujah, because that means he's about to put in his appearance. Amen. When you see things getting a little bit crazy, mm -hmm. amen, that man of sin, mm. amen, that antichrist, the man that's supposed to try to bring false peace mm. to the earth is about to put in his appearance. Amen. So while everything is happening, the Bible says, look up. Redemption. 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 Amen. Let me greet Bishop Richards in the house. Bless God. Amen. Bless Praise God. the Lord. Amen. 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 So, Brother Franklin in the house. Bless the Amen. Lord. Amen. Bless Amen. the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Save the best line for last. <laughs> As Jesus said, let me greet Lady Faith. Amen. 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 In the Praise house. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Susanna. Amen. Amen. Behind the cameras and Brother Jonathan. Praise the Amen. Lord. Take Praise the Lord. Of the Lord. And Brother Sandy on the drums. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I got a little bit of that clip that you were playing last night. <laughs> Amen. I'm like, wow. <laughs> wow. When it's inside of you, you just cannot. Amen. Just sit still. You have to locate the drum somewhere. Yes. Amen. If it's the guitar, it's hard to sit in a service <laughs> and not have your fingers moving. My God, Amen. My because God. it's in you. Yes. And yes. we praise the Lord. Amen. For all he has done. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. I want to read from Joshua chapter 1 and Joshua chapter 5. My topic may seem a little strange. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Every place the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Joshua 5, verse, starting with 13 to 15. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went up unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay. But as captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. Mm. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe off of thy foot. Come on now. For the place where thou standest Thank you, Jesus. is holy ground. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank and you, Joshua Father. did so. My God. Let me read that again. Mm. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe off of thy foot. Uh, for the place where thou standest holy. is holy. Thank holy God. ground. And Joshua did as he was commanded to do. Thank you, Jesus. I want to use for a subject or a topic this morning, one foot, two feet. Joshua, in the Bible, I can say mostly everybody is familiar with. Uh, his first name was Hosea, the son of Nun. 
And Moses changed it to Joshua. Amen. Son of Nun. The name Joshua means salvation. He was born a slave while Israel was in Egypt. And we see according to Numbers chapter 27 verse 18. Amen. God chose Joshua to assist Moses in the leadership over Israel. And it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man whom is the, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thy hand upon him. Amen. We see that he was not just randomly chosen, amen, as a governor to work with Moses. God spoke to Moses and commanded Moses to lay hands on him. And notice God mentioned the spirit was in him. Amen. This couldn't be referring to man's spirit. Amen. Because if the spirit, man's spirit was not in Joshua. Amen. Joshua would have been dead. Amen. But he was alive and well. So God was referring to the Holy Spirit that was inside Joshua. It's very sad how many uh, are coming out with titles, uh, starting ministries, advertising themselves, uh, and assisting men of God, uh, armor bearers, yet they don't have uh, the spirit. Amen. God has not chosen them uh, to bear the load. And that's when uh, you have to start, that's when jealousy starts to set in. Amen. That's when sabotage uh, steps in. That's when the church begins to split. Amen. Hallelujah. Because those that were never called to help us, uh, were taken and placed uh, where they were not qualified to stand. Uh, so they easily became led by the flesh uh, instead of led by the spirit uh, and they wreaked havoc in the church of God. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. But here God shows uh, that to have hands laid on you for positional leadership you must have the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. The spirit must already be inside of you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You must have the Holy Ghost. Jesus said in Acts 1 verse 8, He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Power to be a disciple. Power to heal. Power to deliver. Power to stand in the office. Power to execute that which has been divinely assigned to you. You need the Holy Ghost power. Amen. The Spirit of God must be inside of you. Hallelujah. We get our power from the Holy Ghost through the name of Jesus. Not from charms. Not from anklets. Not from altars. Not from idols hidden around the place. Yes. The Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost with fire. The Holy Ghost with power. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many running down the prophets. Uh, hallelujah. To have lay, hands laid on them. Amen. Uh, to get their power. To get sight. Uh, to get hearing. Uh, and miracles. Uh, and it's the wrong hands being laid. Uh, with the wrong motives. Hallelujah. Connecting people. Hallelujah. With who have the wrong motives. Uh, and that's why some can't get any further. Than where they are. Bad connection. The wrong hands was laid on you. And that's why nothing seems to be working out. You could do 40 days a night fasting and nothing is shifting. Yes, sir. My God, still mm. 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 Hey, hallelujah. The wrong hands was rubbed on you. Be careful of who you bring with you when you're going to buy your car. Yes. Be careful of who you bring with you when you're going to look at that house you want to purchase. Be careful of who you bring with you to check out a potential spouse. It's not everyone can go with you job hunting. Come on. It's not everyone can go into business with you. It's not everyone can talk your dreams and your goals over with you. We're picking up too much people with wrong motives to help us out because we lack discernment. Yes, sir. But God said that the Spirit is in Joshua. Go and lay hands on him for leadership. 
So after Moses gives the tribe and the tribes of land for their inheritance, uh, he tells the tribe of Levi uh, that the Lord will be their inheritance. Mm. We see Joshua calling all the tribes of Israel together in Shechem. And in a final plea, he reminds them of all the gifts the Lord has given them. In Joshua 24, verse 15, Joshua is the one that uh, uh, gives that declaration that is so voiced among Christian circles. Amen. He declares, uh, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He didn't say until they fire me from my job. He didn't say until they start to talk about me, scandalize me, gossip me. He didn't say until things started to get tough. Amen. He didn't add any conditions to the, the declaration. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Notice he didn't say until the children decide if they want to serve the Lord. He didn't even give them an option. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When you can pay your own mortgage and rent and look after yourself, amen. How you put your key in your own, amen, keyhole, your own door, amen. You can decide, but as long as you're under the roof, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Joshua lets us know that you can't toggle between two choices. If it seemed evil to you to serve the Lord, then choose you this day who you will serve. If the gods of this world is what you want with all their pleasure, then by all means pursue them with your whole heart. But if it's the Lord, it's your heart's desire, then serve him with your whole heart. It's all or nothing. Hallelujah. Now, even though we know that Joshua was destined to take over from Moses, yet by scripture we know that it seemed his faith was not at the same level as Moses and some others that he, he worked with, amen, or was in charge of. For instance, we see that Moses was strong and confident. Yet in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 7 and 23, amen, he had to tell Joshua twice, listen, be strong and courageous. We see God... Amen. Telling Joshua three times in Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, 7, and 9. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Even the people he was leading said, come on, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong, my God. Yet when God puts you on a level of leadership, you will have some that, amen, become jealous. And will try to confront them and intimidate you and push themselves around. Amen. Like heaven was, heaven put them in authority. Amen. You can't go any further unless you get their permission. But when the hand of the Lord is on you, amen, and you've been called and appointed and anointed for such a time as this, even Satan, hallelujah, has to step aside, take a seat, and watch you do what you were called to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. As bad as you can do it, it's still better than the one who was not called to do it. Hallelujah. I remember when I was uh, in my condition. Amen. And, 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 and there was some fighting and fussing going on. And I was hearing about it. And I went to the Lord about it. And the Lord said, listen. Amen. You, in your worst condition, was chosen over them in their best condition. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. I have called you. And I set you on high. When you are called, even in your worst position or condition, you're still better than those who are not called, no matter how My good God. they are. My God. My God. Hallelujah. So in the face of confrontations, in the face of intimidation, in the face of threats and raised voices, and some people with their bad eye looking, with 
their mad face. Amen. Be strong. Be confident, Joshua. Be courageous. For the Lord is with you. Thank you, Jesus. So we go on to recognize that the servant became a leader. He was first a servant, an obedient servant. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And notice that God and Moses did not cease to encourage him. So much that we wonder why he had such a need. You see, in his humility, Joshua felt so inferior to Moses that he believed on top of those, uh, amen, that were thinking they could do a better job. He thought himself inadequate, unqualified, and even unworthy to compete, amen, complete a task that only his master Moses was capable of completing satisfactory. But in spite of how Joshua felt about himself, he trusted God, amen, and God accomplished miracles for Joshua. Hallelujah. You see, when you're called, all you have to do is show up. Amen. Get ready and show up and watch God. Amen. Do what you can't do. Amen. Hallelujah. And he won't put you behind the scene. He'll put you out in front. But you don't take the glory for yourself. You give the glory back to God. It was Joshua who spied out the land of Canaan and believed with Caleb that Israel could take the land. Hallelujah. You know, you have some people among us, amen. They sit in silence. They don't look like much. But when they open up their mouth and faith begins to pour out, rivers of confidence flood your soul and they end up encouraging you instead of you encouraging them. Amen. Amen. We are Glory to God. It was Joshua in chapter 3 under his leadership. The Jordan River opened up, was cut off. The water refused to flow down, the Bible says. When the feet of the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant stepped in the water and the people crossed over. Dry ground again, just like just like the river opened with Elijah, Amen. Just like the river opened with Elijah, Amen. On dry ground they cross over. It was this same Joshua received instructions to march around Jericho with the army, and on the seventh day, march seven times, and all you have to do, Hallelujah. To make that wall that is standing in front of you. Amen. Hallelujah. To shout a shout unto God. Watch the walls come tumbling down. Could it be that the reason it seems like wall after wall is before you is because you refuse to send up a shout of victory and praise the Lord before it comes down? Notice here. They shouted first and the walls came crumbling. When trouble in your life, uh, shout out a praise. Uh, when things don't make sense, uh, shout out a praise. Uh, when you feel cornered, uh, shout out a praise. But God has given uh, the city of the audience. You see, there are some victories, uh, some battles, uh, amen, that will only come, uh, amen, that you only get the victory uh, with a praise, amen. There's some promotions uh, that will only come with a shout of uh, praise being offered up. Uh, amen. Before you're promoted up, uh, shout out you, your praise because God uh, has given you the victory. Praise the name of Jesus. This same Joshua upset the laws of nature by ordering the sun and the moon to stand still during a man of battle. Even during the battle, when some tried to run away, you can read it in Joshua chapter 10, amen, verse 11. The Bible says that some enemies were trying to run away and escape, amen. God sent down rocks from heaven to destroy the enemy. 
enemies uh, before they could get away. He will not allow your enemies to escape uh, from what they try to do to you. Amen. Vengeance belongs to God. What you are facing or passing through, even if you have to come out the sun, be still, and the moon not to move until you're satisfied with your outcome. If you have to command it, go ahead and command it. Sun, I command you to stand still. Moon, I command you not to move another inch until I receive what is mine. Shall tread shall be yours. 
One was feet. The other was foot. Notice God wasn't concerned if one, if you had one foot or two feet. The thing was the place you are standing is holy ground. Respect it and move your shoes. Now Jewish custom tells us that it is forbidden to wear shoes anywhere the Shekinah glory dwells. It says we are likened unto the angels, the holy angels. We go without shoes when in the presence of God. Anywhere the glory of God was, God was. When on or approaching holy ground, you had to take off your shoes. Amen. So the angel, amen, had God had to tell Joshua, take off. Why? Because Joshua was not at the temple where he was expecting, amen, to see the glory of God. Here he is out spying, and a man begins to approach him, amen. And because this man was not just any normal man, the man said, take off your shoes. Meaning that the presence I come with is a holy presence. It's a Shekinah of glory. Amen. You're not just in any wilderness. Amen. If you need him to be in the desert, he will be in the desert. Take off the shoes. Hallelujah. The priest in the temple could not wear any shoes. Why? Because the Shekinah glory of God oh, was in the temple. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Now, I really want to look at the one foot. <clears throat> Joshua, the man of war, was a one foot leader. Yes. Yes. Now, with the one foot, it's also symbolic of being under the law, it speaks of limitations, oh. restrictions. Delays. It speaks of never being good enough. Even though with one foot, Joshua done so many exploits. And that was with one foot under the law. Joshua could only help Israel so much. When Joshua finally dies at the age of 110, he had done his part yes. and could go no further. Amen. The old covenant, the law. Thank you. But Romans 6 verse 14 tells us that we are not under the law, but we are under grace. Hebrews 8 verse 6 tells us Christ has mediated a better covenant which was established, legislated, decreed on what? Better promises. Now notice that the next book in the Bible after Joshua is what? Judges. When Joshua dies, oh, hallelujah, the children of Israel begin to cry out to God and ask, who will go up for us against the Canaanites? And the Lord says, send Judah, hallelujah. And Judah means praise. God tells the children of Israel, send the praise into the battle. Amen. It says, Judah went up. Praise went up. It's not the first time praise uh, to bring down some walls uh, and some enemies hallelujah even if you don't know what God is doing for you amen praise him in ways uh, hallelujah the Bible says uh, in Psalms 22 verse 3 God inhabits the praises uh, of his people In the Hebrew, it is termed like this. God sits down to dwell as judge in the praises of his people to judge in their favor. God sits down to dwell as judge in the praises of his people to judge in their favor. 
God inhabits the praises of his people. And when God moves in your praise, he don't come just to stand and see what's going on. No, he comes to make some judgments. He comes to execute some stuff. He comes to make some decrees and declarations, break some chains and bondages, bring some people up out of some graves, turn some situations and circumstances around. When you praise God, he comes into the hallelujah, the praises of your people, those chains that seem to bind you, serve only to remind you, they'll draw powerless behind you when you begin to praise God. Same time. 
Caleb had a made up mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Notice his generation doesn't question whether it's possible or not. They just know that because they represent Christ, all things are possible to them that believe. They know that because they represent Christ, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. They know because they represent Christ, they have power to trample upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall my enemies be able to harm them. Not with one foot, but two foot. Imagine a one foot man connected to a one foot covenant made such a mark in his time that thousands of years later he is still remembered. Now you have two feet connected to a more sure, a better established, a better legislated covenant. What are you willing to do for Christ? Hallelujah. What will Hallelujah. you do? For his kingdom. Hallelujah. Just being connected to a better covenant means the promises flow over unto you. Romans 8 verse 17 talked about heirs and joint heirs. We look at Ishmael. Amen. He was not the child of promise. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And if some of you would only come on Bible study, oh, you would have known this before. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. But just because yes. he was connected yes. to the yes. one being blessed, My God. My God. Abraham, yes, My God. he was blessed. Yes. Genesis 17, verse yes. 20. Hallelujah. The Lord says, As for Ishmael, I have heard thee, Abraham. Yes. Behold, I have blessed him, yes. and I will make him fruitful, yes. and will multiply him exceedingly. My God. My twelve God. princes yes. shall he beget, meaning he'll give birth to twelve princes, My and I will make, hallelujah, him a great nation. Yes. But my covenant, in verse 21, I will establish with Isaac, yes. which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this time.
in the old covenant. You couldn't just go to the priest and tell him to go to God so so. You had to bring something. And it couldn't just be any, any, anything. It had to be the best. You couldn't go behind that veil yourself. No. No. Even the priest was trembling when he would go behind there. They would tie a rope around his waist with a bell on. And as long as they heard that bell clink, 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 they knew he was alive. And on the outside there were men, amen, ready, waiting, just in case that thing stopped ringing. To pull him out. No one would dare go behind that veil to see what was wrong. The old covenant. When Christ died, that veil ripped in half. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's one mediator between God and man. Amen. The man Christ Jesus. And Paul tells us, come boldly before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. You don't have to have any rope tied around your waist with any bells around it. Amen. Cling, cling, cling. Amen. Come boldly to the throne of God. Hallelujah. The throne of grace. Amen. Where angels, hallelujah, are careful to step. You come boldly. Because a better covenant was legislated by Christ on your behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't take this grace for granted. Don't take this covenant for granted. Don't think you can just live any and anyhow. And you're covered. Live a holy life. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Better covenant. Hallelujah. Established a better covenant. Legislated a better covenant. Amen. Better promises. Or sure promises. Hallelujah. Ironclad covenant. Hallelujah. And it has Satan running mad. Hallelujah. Because no matter what he tries to do, amen, nothing he does will be able to shift you. Hallelujah. Was it Paul who was uh, on the shipwreck? Amen. And the ship, uh, the angel appeared to, to him and said, Amen. Tell the man, uh, Hallelujah, what to do. Amen. And something to believe. And the ship was smashed to pieces. Uh, and some had to hold on a broken piece uh, of wood. Uh, amen. And use that to float to shore. Amen. Under the new covenant, uh, even if it's a broken piece uh, of wood, you have to hold on. You will make it safer to the shore. It guarantees you will reach the land if you want to. Hallelujah. If you want to. Hallelujah. Praise God. One foot. Man. It's talked about thousands of years later. Hallelujah. Amen. Two for the king. It's talked about thousands of years later. Hallelujah. What are they going to say about this two foot people? My God. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word, God. Thank we want to pray for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You, mm. you know, sometimes we walk amiss. Mm -hmm. Let me say it like that. <clears throat> Because we think we're right until we find out that we were not right. Yeah. And then the Lord expects you to walk according to the right information you receive. Thank you, Lord. And we're here to tell you that the covenant you are under, amen, hallelujah, demands you be like him and not like the world. It demands that you walk in faith and not by sight. It demands you trust him 
when you can't even see what your next move is. But just because he said, trust me. Just because Moses said, Joshua, I want you to go. Joshua didn't question. Even though he may have been nervous. Even though holding the sword, he was shaking, but he was still going. Mm -hmm. Because there is victory in obedience. Amen. Amen. There is Amen. victory in obedience. Victory in obedience. Amen. Some people will question whether that angel that appeared to him was Amen. Jesus before. Amen. In his uh, pre-incarnate uh, image. Or whether it was an angel of high order. That the glory of God, regardless, he had to take off his shoes. Mm. We're of a different order. Yes. Yeah. We're from a different world. Our citizenship is not here. We, like Abraham, wait to see that city whose builder, hallelujah, and foundation maker is God. And while we are waiting for our Lord to put in his appearance and take us back to that city, amen, we must be found waiting. Our lamps filled with oil, hallelujah looking for his coming excited for his coming not sad to leave this crazy world behind not at all. Not at all. hallelujah mm. trust me as that angel puts that trumpet to his sound to his mouth I'll be gone already mm. goodbye world I'll stay no longer with you I don't have anything here that I want to go back for amen and we want to pray before we close some have not been walking according to the tenets of the new covenant. They've been living under that different mindset, not taking on the mindset of Christ. Now is your chance to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, hallelujah, this better covenant that you are a part of. Reveal to you the more sure, the established promises, the better promises that are yours just for being connected. Hallelujah. We want to go to the Lord and pray, after which I will bless the tithe and the offering that is given. Amen. To God be the glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, every promise in the book is ours. Hallelujah. Every tenant of the covenant, hallelujah, is binding. Hallelujah, and it's still binding. Hallelujah, through the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, that you saw it fit. Hallelujah, that those former things was only a shadow of what was to come. Hallelujah, and what the old could not do. Hallelujah, the new did. Hallelujah, what all those sacrifices, the blood that flowed. Hallelujah, of goats and bullocks, cows and things offered hallelujah time after time after time and it was only a temporary relief God the blood of Jesus did it once and for all and we thank you for grace we thank you for mercy we thank you for victory God we thank you Lord that under this new covenant we are blessed highly favored hallelujah we are common oh God uncommon people oh God walking in uncommon favor with uncommon blessings and uncommon presence around us God hallelujah we thank you God for this better covenant and we ask that you open up our eyes and our understanding and give us revelation knowledge of the tenets of this covenant and its binding and its authority hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ we pray we give you thanks Lord for this word Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are not of the old, we're of the new. Praise your holy name. And Father, we bless this time and this offering that is given. We thank you, Lord, that you are the source 
You're the provider, God. And we ask that you breathe upon it. We ask that you multiply it, oh God, to be used where it is to be used, God. And everyone that gives, oh God, into this good ground, into the soil, God, let it bring forth a harvest unto them, God. Hallelujah. Let it bring forth a harvest, oh God. Not in a secret harvest, God, but a harvest that is visible. Hallelujah. That will manifest for others to see it, oh God. And they will know that it is good ground, God. Bless, oh God, the givers, oh God. Bless what is given, oh God. Multiply it, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. And those with needs, Lord God, I pray that you will meet it in the name of Jesus. And those with wants, Lord God, that you will favor them, oh God, in it in the name of Jesus. And to you and you alone belong all glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. We come against the altars of poverty. We we come against the altars uh, of stagnant sin. We come against uh, the altars of God uh, that is stealing the money that is causing your people to live in lack of oh God. And we crush and destroy them uh, and root them out in, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and we release that blessing, God, unto your people that they walk, oh God, under the tent uh, of this new covenant uh, as people of the most high God and just as the Old Testament saints anywhere they went they knew that you were their God Lord let anywhere we walk now over the earth that they will know that we belong to the most high God in the name of Jesus bless it in Jesus name we pray in the mighty name of Jesus the church said amen Jesus now we are standing in his presence on Lord.